Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Jamie, and you are watching Cast of You Christian Church at Home. We are so glad that you're here today. We want to pray for and with you, so if you have a prayer request, go ahead and put it in the comments. Now let us turn our hearts to God as we worship. Woke up this morning, life as you know it Looked nothing like the kind of life you knew before And all of a sudden, fear stole the headlines And it don't feel safe to even step outside your door In this world, you will have trouble he has overcome the world So take heart Take a breath Let him lift that heavy weight up off your chest Take his hand I know it's looking dark When the world falls all around you He won't let you fall apart So take heart Take heart Do you remember singing Reckon you were younger He's got the whole world in his hands Well that's still true He's got your family All your friends and all your loved ones And even when you're barely hanging on He's hanging on to you in this world you will have trouble he has overcome the world in this world you will have trouble he has overcome the world so take heart take a breath let him lift that heavy weight up off your chest take his hand i know it's looking dark but when the world falls all around you he won't let you fall apart so take heart take a breath let him lift that heavy weight up off your chest take his hand I know it's looking dark When the world falls all around you He won't let you fall apart Take heart Take heart Do you remember singing Back when you were younger He's got the whole world in his hand well, that's still true. Missional Partners, thank you for your generous giving towards the mission and ministry of Cassidy Christian Church. With your support, we get to impact thousands of families in the Cassidy community, even during a pandemic. Here are three ways you can give your offerings. One, through our church's website at cassidychristian.com, by mail, or the Venmo app at casa-view. Now is the time to get out your Bible or your Bible app so that you can follow along with the scripture. We are in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and, and as I was prophesying, 
prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to, say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain and they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. So there's this really silly and ridiculous movie called Monty Python and the Holy Grail. If you've seen it, just go ahead and put I've seen it in the comments. We, I'd love to know. So this whole movie is a parody. It, it parodies King Arthur and the Knight's Quest to find the Holy Grail. And, and it makes a joke out of different aspects of society at the time. Now, nearly every scene in this movie is utterly outrageous. People either love this movie or hate this movie and the satire in it, much like or the same way that people either love or hate SNL. And one of these outrageous scenes, a man is going through the streets of the city yelling, bring out your dead in a perfect British accent while he pulls a cart that is piled with several people who have died from the latest plague or battle, I, I can't remember. But as the man yells, bring out your dead, you see people bringing out their dead and, and loading them onto this cart. But then, then a man enters the scene, holding another man over his shoulder, but the man he is holding over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes is clearly not dead. And matter of fact, as he is hanging there, he's, he's saying things like, I'm not dead yet. And, I could go for a walk and I'm feeling happy. I'm not dead yet. But but the man holding him and the man directing the cart decide that he's going to end up dead in a few days anyways and they go ahead and and put him on the cart that that has been reserved for all of these people who have actually died. These two men think that he's already in the grave even despite the man's efforts trying to, to convince them that he's not in fact dead, but still very much alive, still vibrant. I mean, he wants to go for a walk. In our scripture today, the spirit of God goes to the valley of dry bones to tell God's people, though they are in the grave, though their, their bones are brittle and dry, they are not in fact dead not for forever. Instead of yelling, bring out your dead to collect the remains of what was but will never be again, Ezekiel, God's prophet, walks through the valley of dry bones saying to God's people, you're not dead yet. It's not over. The Spirit of God says through this prophet, through the prophet Ezekiel, to the, the people of God, even though you look quite dead, things look quite dead, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them and you will live again. Now, some of the background of what was happening here. The prophet Ezekiel and all of God's people historically they, they have been forced to leave their home and they are not allowed to return. Ezekiel's home, Judah, has been taken over by the Babylonians. And all of the people, except for the poorest of poor, 
have now been shipped off, hauled off to distant lands in order to work for, to be enslaved to, and prosper their enemies. They don't get to live their own lives now. They have to live their lives for the Babylonians. At this point, among God's people, Israel, there was little hope of ever returning back to their homeland. There was little hope of being restored. God's people are, in this passage, grieved and broken and struggling and desolate. Matter of fact, in verse 11, we see that. Judah and the whole house of Israel laments in pain, saying, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. We are dead. Or in other words, they're saying things like, we will never bloom again. We will never rise again. We will never be a vibrant people again. But then, then God speaks to the prophet Ezekiel through this, this vision God speaks to Ezekiel through a series of visions. If you are into sci-fi at all, you will be into Ezekiel. Matter of fact, if you've never read the book of Ezekiel and you're into the sci-fi thing, read it. It's really intriguing. One of the visions that, that God gives Ezekiel is this valley of dry bones. And in the vision, the Spirit of God picks Ezekiel up and transports him to this graveyard. And when he's there, the the bones are everywhere, layer on top of layer on top of layer of bones. All of the bones represent the, the people of Israel. They represent their death and their suffering and their hopelessness and their desolation. Standing then there in the center of the valley, Ezekiel can't take a step forward or back without hearing the crunch of dry, brittle bones breaking underneath his feet. The bones have been there for who knows how long, but long enough that they are now dry. So dry that several have turned into little more than just a powdery dust that fills the air with a fog that makes it hard to see and to breathe. So you're starting to get the picture of this environment, the environment of the valley of the dry bones. This place is a place of des desolation, of grief, of despair, of constant dying. And I want to make clear about how very dead this place is. This isn't like one of your house plants that you can water again and it's going to revive. It's deader than dead. The bones are not located on a plain or on a level prairie pasture but in a valley. So you can think of it like a crater. The valley of the dry bones is like a crater. So Ezekiel is standing in this valley, standing in this crater, and Ezekiel is unable to see beyond the valley as he would be able to if he was standing on a more flat plain. He is sunk low. Ezekiel and the people of God have no clear vision of a way out. And this might sound familiar to you. You might just know exactly what I'm talking about. The places of, of death in your life or the places of suffering or struggling in your life or situations that feel like an all-consuming despair or, ho or hopelessness where you've sunk so low into that valley that you can't see a way out. I mean, this is where Ezekiel is situated. This is what he's seeing. And this is what the people of Israel are experiencing. Already sunk low in this valley. The valley, of course, is full of bones. But not just a few bones. The scripture tells us that, that is, it is a great many bones. So it's not just a little bit of death or a little bit of hopelessness or a little bit of sadness, sadness, but, but a lot of it. It's all consuming. And then lastly, the, the valley 
doesn't just have a great many bones, but bones that were also very dry. And what this tells us is that the death and the suffering, the, the pain and the hopelessness has been there for a really long time. I mean, bones don't disintegrate quickly. The hopelessness and, and, and pain felt put its feet up on the couch and it's determined to stick around for a really long time. Like Urkel used to do to the Winslow family in the show Family Matters, no matter how hard they tried to get Urkel to leave, to, to get rid of him, he just kept coming back. And this is what was happening to the people of Israel, to God's people. This despair, this, this agony, this pain, the struggle that they were going through put its feet up and it was there to stay no matter how hard they try to get rid of it. As a prophet, Ezekiel's role is to speak God's word directly into the lives of God's people. Ezekiel is God's voice here. So speaking directly to their pain, speaking directly to their grief, speaking directly to their hopelessness and desolation, Ezekiel speaks God's word and reminds the entire house of Israel who they are and what God is able to do for them, even in this valley, even in this struggle. That's, that's impossible. Ezekiel prophesies as instructed by the Holy Spirit. He prophesies to the death, to the bones. And he says, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. I am going to make you live again. I am, I am going to make you hope again. See, it is in the valley where the remains of what was go to never be again. It is in that place that the spirit of the living God speaks and acts and moves. And then we see the bones begin to rattle. We see that the things that were never to be again begin to wake up <laughs> as this is what the spirit does. Bone fixes on bone and sinews form between them. Flesh comes over them and skin forms around their boundaries. From the four winds, God pours breath into the lungs of newly formed bodies. Then in numbers too many to count, the slain and broken stand up from their pain. They don't just stand up. They stand up from their pain. They stand up from their des desolation. They stand up from their grief, from their hopelessness. The dry bones live. And they live again when they thought that they were done, when they thought it was all over. See, the people of God who thought that they were dead are not, in fact, dead in our scripture. They are not dead yet. They are not hopeless after all. They are not a pile of old dry bones left to waste away to dust. God says to the people through the prophet Ezekiel, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I mean, what an image for us. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I don't know about you, but I need to hear that word today. I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. And you will live. You know, for those in, in the valley today, who are sunk so deep in it that you literally cannot see a viable or a visible way out or through. For those who feel the very deep sting of hopelessness or grief or pain, you are not done yet. And in perfect Monty Python fashion, you certainly aren't dead yet. Or maybe this isn't you, but it's somebody you love who's going through this right now, who's in their own valley. They aren't done yet either. 
know, you may look around at your life right now and think it looks a lot like the Valley of the Dry Bones. You know, maybe it's a divorce or an illness or self-doubt. Maybe there's something really painful going on at work. Maybe there's division or conflict within your family. You may look around at your life right now or an aspect of your life and think it's a lot like the Valley of Dry Bones. But you aren't done. And God's not done either. See, God, God can see a whole lot farther past that valley than you can. Remember that God has a higher vantage point than what you do. God's reality is so much bigger than the struggle taking place inside your heart or that struggle or circumstance that's going on right in front of you. It is in these very places and these valleys, the ones where there's not just a few bones, but a great many bones and where those bones have become dry. It is in these places that the spirit of the living God speaks to wake us up and to make us new again. You may be in a time in your life right now or can remember it in the past where you felt like there is literally nothing in front of me because all I can see and all I can feel right now is this valley and all of the, the difficult feelings that go along with it. That's all there is right now. But the scripture reminds us, the prophet Ezekiel reminds us that, that we are not yet done. That God sees a path where we see no path. And God sees a way through when we are blinded by our own valleys. It is in the places where it seems like all of the good and all of the beautiful things in our lives have gone to never be again, that God's spirit speaks and acts and restores. Not necessarily restoring the things back to the way it was or restoring us back to the way we were, but, but that something new is created. God's spirit is in the business of, of opening graves and bringing us up and out of them. Remember that today. Remember that today. It's what God's spirit does. And if God can create a whole person from just the remnants of some dust from some bones, if God can create a whole person and a vast army from that, and what, what can God do with you? What can God do with your grave, with your valley? I invite you to consider today, what grave in your life is God's spirit opening for you and bringing you up and out of? Where is God's spirit calling you to life again? Where? Where is God's spirit calling you to hope again? What in your life did or do you think is very dead and very gone that may not be dead and may not be gone after all? Amen. Will you pray with me? Awesome and, and loving God, we, we thank you for this very moment. And we pray, Lord, that you would fill us up with your spirit. God, we've all um, encountered or, or experienced a, a valley or a valley of dry bones. For those today who are in it, 
and the middle of that valley where there's no seemingly way out. God, I pray, I pray that you would meet them with your spirit, that you would fill them with courage, that you would fill them with hope, and that you would help them take one step at a time forward. God, I pray that, that we would get to see both in our own lives and in, in the people that you have put around us, that we would see you open graves, that you would bring us up and out of the graves that we are in and, and, and that you would bring our friends and our family and our communities up and out of their graves too that we would see your spirit breathe new life and new hope into each one of us. We pray all of these things through the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Thank you for watching Cassidy Christian Church at Home. We are so glad that you came today. If you want to give to the mission and ministry of Cassidy Christian Church, you can do so through our website. If you would like to sign up to volunteer um, at our next big food distribution on Thursday, June 17th, we'd love to have you. You can also sign up on our website uh, for that as well. Now go in God's love, go in God's peace, and go in God's hope. Take care, everybody.